right, what's up guys? It is Friday, TGIF. I'm very happy because the bigger part of the bike riding week is about to start, the weekend. Um, I'm going to start answering your guys' questions on Fridays as long as I'm not suffering at a race somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and I'm probably going to do this in a couple different videos because there's a lot of great questions and I don't want this to run on forever. And I apologize in advance if I butcher your names. So the first question is from Dennis Bivey asking me uh, if I ride a full suspension because he noticed I always ride hardtails. Now, I have been riding hardtails in previous years. This year, starting in April, I've only been riding a full suspension bike. I was previously riding hardtails because that is the only option that I had. The bike sponsor that I've been riding for, Canyon Bikes, just came out with a full suspension this year that is carbon and race worthy. So I've been really happy to be on that because I picked the hardest, most brutal races in the world and the most technical. So riding a hardtail isn't always my favorite thing to do. And moving forward, I will not be riding a hardtail at all because full suspension is better for me on many, many, many levels, which is a whole other conversation we can get into, but I love full suspensions. No more hardtail. Sweet. All right, next question is from Craig Foster. How much recovery time do I take in a week? It really depends on the week. It depends on what sort of stress levels I have in my life, what kind of training I've been doing, what kind of racing I've been doing. But generally, as a rule of thumb, I take two days off per week. Recovery is equally as important as it is to training. And if I'm tired, if, it's, if I've already taken two days off and I'm still trying to go for a ride and I'm tired and wondering if I should be riding, I go home. So when in doubt, leave it out. Recovery, if your goal is to get faster, it's important to take the time to rest. So generally, a good rule of thumb is two days a week. Some people take more, same, some people take less. Next question, I'm only going to take the first part of it, is do I take time off the bike during the winter? And the answer is I reduce my riding, but I don't take time off. Um, now that I live in BC most of the time, it's a lot more challenging in the winter time to ride because they actually don't plow the bike path. So last year I was spending time on the trainer and I was not happy because I hate the trainer. So I actually got a fat bike. I got a fat back, which is an Alaskan built fat bike. And it's a really sweet bike. And I started riding that at the end of last winter and that made it a lot better for me. So this year I'm going to be riding my fat bike a lot. There will be some trainer sessions, and I'm also planning to do more cross-country skiing and more running. Um, but I just love riding my bike, and I would ride year-round if I could. But it is important to take some time off of the bike if you're feeling burnt out, and I usually take about three weeks with zero pedaling. The next question is from Eric Graham, and he says he coaches a women or he coaches a high school mountain bike team in Colorado. Awesome. And he wants to know how to get more girls excited about mountain biking and racing. Now, this is a great question. It's probably one of the more tricky questions to answer. Um, I think you could get more high school girls excited about mountain biking if you tell them there's hot guys there. That definitely would have motivated me when I was in high school to go mountain biking. Um, but all joking aside, I think that women or maybe high school girls might be a bit intimidated by mountain biking because you could fall down and get hurt and... I'm honestly intimidated of the water, like white water kayaking, because I'm afraid I'll get hurt. So it's probably the same type of fear or hesitancy that holds women back from going mountain biking. So I would keep it where they will feel confident that they won't get hurt, and then it's going to be fun. And cycling tends to have this funny association with suffering, which is kind of true. But I think if you can make it fun for them and... Uh, Make it so they're not intimidated. I don't know how exactly you can do that. It depends really on the person, but that would probably be the best way. And, you know, hot boys. That always helps. There's lots of hot boys in cycling. Next question, and this will be the last one for this video clip. It's from Tony Clark. Have I ever tried Hammer Perpetuum for long distance energy? And if not, what do I eat and drink during long races? The answer is no, I have not tried Hammer Perpetuum. Um, it just... I don't think I like, I've never tried it. I just, for some reason, I don't think I'll like the taste and I don't particularly like super high calorie drinks um, because I like changing up my nutrition. So what I tend to do in my long races is I use goo 
and I tend to eat a lot of gel. And for me, that helps because I burn a lot of sugar even at lower intensities. So I take a gel or five gels and I put them in a gel flask and I add water, shake up the gel flask and then I essentially drink the gels. I like bars, but I will change up the type of bar depending on what type of uh, mood I'm in. But I really like chocolate, I like cherry, I like salt. So it kind of depends. And for drink, I like Goo Roctane, which is actually a higher calorie drink, but it doesn't have the heavy proteins in it that I think Perpetuum has. So really the trick is finding a system that works for you. The system that works best for me is gel mixed in with water, Goo Roctane, and I always have a bottle of plain water on my bike as well. So one bottle of sports drink, one bottle of plain water, gels in a flask and a bar or two, and electrolyte tablets as well. So that's it for this portion. I will start up a new portion at where you can break up your afternoon. And uh, thanks to everyone for participating.